I wanted to show you how easy it is to add an X to NPM, PNPM or Yarn workspace and what you get right away right after just minutes of setup. So here I have a small workspace that Claude uh, generated for me. Right? Uh, there are a few packages, just kind of placeholder packages. There is not much, not much is going on there, right? And I could do uh, basic things, right? I'm using PNPM. I can, for example, build all my packages. You know, I could, uh, that works, right? I can test all my packages. That also works. And I could even run the watch mode, but that doesn't really work, right? It doesn't really work because several things run concurrently in the watch mode. PNPM doesn't do it well, okay? So PNPM is fine for kind of fairly basic workspaces like that uh, because I want to have three packages in here. Uh, if I had 30 or say 300, not that uncommon, that wouldn't be usable. Right? The whole task run wouldn't be usable uh, that PNPM provides. Uh, it also is not usable for those long run in watch or throw like tasks, right? which just doesn't work well. All right, to add an X to this workspace, we need to do the following. We need to type in NPX, an X, latest in it. Uh, once it runs, it's going to ask us a question, would it be like a minimum setup or a guided setup? And the reason why, why, why it does it is that Annex knows this is a PNPM workspace. So it actually can help us configure all this stuff for us, the caching and the rest of it, right? Um, to be helpful, right? So you don't have to do it. Uh, but just to show you what is the bare minimum is when it comes to Annex configuration, I'm going to choose minimum, just to show you what, would it, what you can start with if you choose so, okay? If I do that, uh, it's done. Uh, what it did is it uh, added a dependency, which makes sense, and it added a configuration file, which at this point is empty. We don't need to configure anything to start using an X, right? It works as is, right, already. It can provide value. However, to show you more cool stuff, I'm going to, uh, let's just ignore that, right? I'm going to reset it, and I'm going to uh, do the guided setup because I think I can show you more features this way. Okay, so let's start from scratch. All right, imagine I'm running this command uh, and this time I'm more adventurous and I'm choosing guided, okay? Uh, so it figured out that we have some scripts and uh, it will let us choose uh, which scripts have to run in order, in the logical order, here nothing, which scripts are cacheable. Okay, we know build is cacheable, probably, test is cacheable. Clean is not cacheable because clean the side effect of operation that removes stuff. We don't need that. And test watch is a long running thing that doesn't produce any final artifacts. It doesn't make sense to cache it. Okay? We just do that. It will ask us uh, where does the build uh, script create out outputs, right? And it, uh, I think, I believe it does it in the dist. Yeah. So let's just type in dist. And test doesn't do anything. No outputs. And uh, here it's going to ask us if we want to um, install any plugins. So why, why, why plugins? What do they do? Uh, so Annex ships with those custom plugins for your tools that configure things in a more efficient way, you know, cache and distribution and whatnot. And uh, they could be very, very helpful. So it figured out we use Vit. So it, it's suggesting the Vit plugin that we can install. However, they are completely optional. Right? In this particular case, I'm not going to use it just to show you the more kind of bare bones version of using Annex, okay? Here, uh, it's asking us if we want to enable AI power stuff here in CI and remote caching, and this is very cool. I'm going to say yes, uh, because it's one of the killer features of Annex. Okay, so we are done. We're going to complete the CI story in a bit. For now, I'm just going to look at what we got generated, okay? So what we got is uh, Annex JSON with some configuration. It tells us that there is a build uh, script, it creates files, and it's cacheable, and it returns it's cacheable, and has an ID. That is it, okay? There is no other configurations anywhere, right? There is one file with 15 lines. Most of it is just brackets and stuff, right? So it's very minimal. Let's see what we can do with it right now. The first reason to use an X uh, in any PNPM workspace or in PM workspace is its TUI, right? Remember, PNPM is, is not bad. This is, this is functional but it's not really scalable, and it's not that functional when it comes to long-running tasks, right? So if I do test.watch, it won't work, right? In, in practice, right? Annex can do a lot better. So if I do annex run menu-t test watch, right? It's going to launch it in the TUI mode, and here I have my processes running at the same time. I can select one, and I can 
switch between them. That's pretty cool. I can uh, pin two of them. That's also pretty cool. And when I select it, select it, I can tab in here. And here I could make it interactive. So I can actually interact with this process on its own as if it ran kind of by itself. That, that's a big deal. That's a big deal because it lets me uh, run, for example, two things concurrently, right? It lets me uh, run two dev servers, one back and one front end. Like all those type of use cases are very, very handy, are, are usable with an access tool. And here, as you can see, it's interactive mode. I can press H, and as you can see, it's working, right? This tool is super powerful. We looked at many tools. We tried to make it the most robust, and we obsessed about it for months, and we're still obsessed about it. It's getting you know, better every day. You can click uh, and get some help, and you'll find out how to use it, uh, how robust it is. One of the cool things about it, which is I'm not going to show right now, is that the tool works with uh, your AI agent, so it will pipe information about what's running to your AI agent, to a copilot or whatnot, right? Such that it can interact better with an X. It can fix things better, so you don't have to copy paste anything. All right, that's very cool. Okay. It's 2025, so all build tools have to work with AI in some way. And NX does, does it really well, right? It integrates with different AI tools both locally while you're coding, right? And also in CI, which I'm going to show you in a second. Right? Locally, if I click on this tool thing, you will see that NX registers an MCP server with bazillion tools, that, you know, just a lot of handy stuff. Uh, one thing that NX provides to an agent, for instance, uh, is sort of the map of your workspace. So the agent knows how different pro projects relate to each other, you know, uh, uh, what team contributes to what. So when agent suggests changes, it can take this kind of organization and workspace information into account. You can think of it sort of as a map, a high-level map that an X feeds to an agent so it's uh, not lost. And one of the things we hear is that agents get lost at, uh, in larger workspaces because just too much information to make sense of. And with an X, it's a lot less likely. Like, for example, I can ask agent, can you show me how different packages relate to each other in this NX workspace? And uh, agent is going to do some stuff. This is not a super useful demo, if I'm honest, right? I mean, yeah, they show us this, okay. You know, <laughs> they don't relate very much, but it's just to prove a point, right? The integration with OEA agents is very strong, and at scale, it actually makes a big difference, okay? So, next is perhaps the most exciting feature, and the main reason you can add an X to your workspace is what it does to your CI, because it does some magical things, okay? Let me open the CI, okay, thank you. The CI configuration, and... Uh, I'm going to change it, right? Uh, Anexified, basically, such that we can be faster and also a lot more robust, right? So here, I'm running all my tests and all my builds. Looks reasonable, right? I'm going to change it in here, and I'm going to change it and run. I'm going to do npx, annex, run many, test and build, right? It's the same. So basically, anytime I see pnpm-r, replaced with run many. You know, I can also combine these things over here. You know, it seems reasonable, right? A very easy transformation. The next thing I'm going to do is say self-healing, and I'm going to run npx annex fix ci if always, okay? What this is going to do, uh, this is going to check if anything in here has failed, right? Some task failing, and if a task failed, uh, this fix EI uh, command is going to patch it up and give me a very nice uh, developer experience. Let me show you. So now I push my changes to my repository. You can see it over here. What I'm going to do next is to connect this repository to Annex Cloud, which will give me remote cache and so here and here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to click here. And inside this, I'm going to pick connect an existing repository. Right? I'm going to do this. And I'm going to select my repository from the list, the top one, makes sense. And uh, that's great. You won't see a lot of this stuff. I, I, you know, obviously I use my next cloud account a lot. There is more going on. Just say, I don't know, new PNPM org or something, right? Doesn't matter. And what I'm going to see now is 
Uh, it's wired up. Okay, sweet. Okay, I have something in here. That is very cool. Uh, so the next thing I want to do in here is um, show you self-healing CI in action. And to do that, uh, let's create a feature branch called change, creatively named, and just introduce a random change. Okay, we'll go inside here. Let's say we, we want to clean up this error message to be something like uh, this. It's not super meaningful, but it will uh, it will do. And I'll do the same, and I'll just do boom, boom. And let's say I made a typo or something. Not particularly fantastic change, right? Uh, but it works well. It actually works well for larger changes sometimes because it's actually meaningful, and AI is able to analyze the change better than this like superficial changes. Okay. Uh, clarify the message. Let's push it. Origin change. To doop to doop. And now I'm going to open a pull request. If I go inside here. Um, and now we just need to wait. Now, if I go back, I just need to wait for my CI to fail to see what's going to happen. Now, uh, we see a pop-up telling us that CI has failed, but the next cloud was able to figure out the fix. Let's take a look at the fix. Let me actually call off some of this stuff, so a bit more space. Here you go. So, it was able to figure out, uh, I mean, this is still change. There's a detailed description, but it boils down to there is a typo. Let's fix the typo, right? Importantly, a nice cloud right now is verifying the fix, and I did verify it. It rerun this particular task, not the whole CI, just the smallest thing possible to verify that the change is actually meaningful and resulted in this test case going from zero to from uh, failing to passing, right? It happens, okay? And now we can either apply this fix, which you send a commit to the pull request. We can apply it locally if you want to tweak a few things, so we can reject it, right? Let me show you another thing real quick, okay? So if I don't use my editor, I think the editor flow, by the way, is the most magical because while in the editor, you just keep coding and it will let you know when something isn't exactly right, you can just honest poll, say yes or no and move on, right? But if you use, uh, like you can also go to GitHub, you will see this command telling you what's wrong. You can click on it and it will show you the same exact fix and you can say apply or reject and the same exact thing will work, okay? That's why it's all cool. So now I'll go back to our editor and say apply. And now let's wait for the CI to rerun so we see it succeed. Okay, CI completed. We got notification. Let's view the results. Yes, please. We can see it's been green, right? So all the tasks passed, you know, very good. Uh, we can also see the same in a, in a pull request. So you can, you know, everything is green, ready to be merged. The important part here, and I think that's worth uh, kind of pointing it out, that we, we made a mistake in our pull request. In this case, it was a small mistake, but it actually works well for larger issues as well. And the next cloud was able to deduce it, like figure out what the mistake was uh, very locally. It looks only as a relevant piece of information. It really works well for larger workspaces. It will look the exact thing that failed. It will use its intelligence, which I showed you a little bit at the beginning where it can understand the whole workspace and is able to draw the graph or whatever. It feeds all this information to an agent. The agent suggests a fix. You can review the fix and say yes or no. And the agent will verify that fix as quickly as possible, as locally as possible, right? So you can have more confidence. And then you can set a commit without having to do anything, without breaking your flow, like while staying in the flow, staying in the flow while you're working on something else perhaps, right? That's what self healing CI is all about. And of course, the cool part is that if I run the CI again, it's, it's already super fast, so it's kind of, that's a bit of a mood. But, uh, it's going to be super fast because it won't, it won't actually run. It will all be retrieved from cache. I gave you a few reasons why you should add an X to NPM, Yarn, PNPM workspaces. The first one, an X has very, very nice, capable TUI. Interacting with an X in a terminal is very nice. We obsess about it and we spend a lot of time tweaking small details, so it's ergonomic. And it's not just ergonomic in a small, but you can actually run it in a workspace with 1,000 tasks and you can still figure out what's going on, select what's relevant. It works really well with long running tasks, so you can pin a few things. It's actually very, very nice, right? Once you start using it, it's very hard to go back. It's a very good reason. Reason number two is an access cache. It's easy to set up and it makes your CI a lot faster. Oftentimes, three times faster, just to enabling the cache. It's a big deal. And what's important, an access remote cache is safe and secure. 
So you cannot just cache poison on X very easily like you can with other build systems. The third reason is uh, the Nexus integration with AI. Uh, I, I want to show you just a little bit. It's hard to show how powerful it is in a small, right? Uh, it kind of works much better when you have a big workspace. Uh, but Nexus fully integrates with your agents such that when they generate code, when they make decisions, they take a lot of metadata that the Next provides into account and makes the decisions that are in accordance with your org's best practices, for example. Right? Very helpful. The fourth reason, and perhaps uh, to me is the most exciting one recently, is self healing CI. I really, I, like, I enjoy writing code. Writing code to me is the most fun thing. I like it. I'm in a flow. I'm having a lot of like good time. It's fun. I do not like babysitting PRs. You send a PR and you have to go back, to refresh and see how it's going, how is my PR. Something fails, a flaky task, or there is a weird issue, you have to attend to it. It's a waste of time. It breaks my flow. I really do not like it. Uh, self and CI just fixes it. Uh, you send a PR, an X is able to figure out by using the AI what's wrong with your PR. Uh, in a very kind of tactical way, it looks at the relevant bits of information, gathers metadata, and suggests a fix and presents you the fix straight in your editor. Like very conveniently, you don't have to go, you don't have to babysit, you just see a notification saying your CI in the past, or if it failed, here are the fix. It's very, very nice, right? I really like it. So those are the four main reasons. There is one bonus section in this video today, which I wasn't sure if I should record because I'm not a trolley person in general. I'm very friendly and I, you know, I like every open source project, but nevertheless. Let's imagine you have a teammate. You like all the stuff I showed you. You're like, yes, I would like to have a safe cache, safe remote cache I can use and not worry about cache poisoning. I would like to have self healing CI and I want my Toyo to be super powerful. So how do I do it? If I have a Turbo Repo based uh, workspace, right? My teammate made a mistake a year ago and now like, is it hard for me to switch from Turbo Repo to NX, right? And the answer is it's not very hard. So here I have, uh, my uh, same workspace as I showed you, uh, but there's a tool by deep configuration, which works reasonably well. The only thing I need to do to make this workspace an NX workspace is to run NPX, an X latest in it. An X will be able to figure out that it's a turbo workspace and it's just going to uh, configure an X for me. I didn't even ask any questions, right? So now I have this. Uh, uh, Turbo Reaper configuration and this NX configuration. Right? They're very similar, unsurprisingly, right? And just remove your Turbo Reaper configuration and enjoy the benefits of NX. Thank you so much.